Good morning. Welcome to the third Sunday of Easter in this resurrection life that we have while we're here on this earth in God's wonderful and unimaginable grace that he's bestowed on us through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. A few things this morning. Hey kids, uh, when you have an opportunity, go grab something that you can tie around mom and dad's eyes as a blindfold this morning. We'll have some fun with that as we look as, as so much of the earth around us blinds us to what we have in Jesus Christ. Second of all, uh, the other thing that we want to look at, many of our students in confirmation I, I get to take sermon notes. Uh, some of you have been uh, trying to do that. Make it easy on you. Either call the office and they'll have some printed up for you or have them email the form to you and that way you can stay on top of, of the sermon notes that you, you'll be taking. And then finally, as we continue this wonderful opportunity in this digital age right now, as we've been recording our services for us that are unable to come into our, our buildings in a house of worship, one of the things that's been uh, really neat to be able to do because we can do this is we've hired somebody to come in and do our recording and our editing, and it's been doing a really nice job for us, and we, we appreciate, Nate, that he's come in and done this for us. But one of the things that we've been having with this is there is an expense with this as we put these um, services together. So right now, on the average for us to produce this for our YouTube channel, it's around $250. Um, one of the things that has been so neat is there was an offering giving, an offering of Thanksgiving above and beyond a tithe, uh, to cover the end of March and all of April. Now starting in May, um, we'll have another opportunity for an offering giving. So if you'd like to be connected to that, just include that in your general offering that you send here to the church. Uh, as you carry out your tithes and your offerings that God blesses you with to carry out his mission and ministry here at Trinity and throughout the world, just send them to P.O. Box J here in New York Mills, 56567. And then also you're always welcome to drop them off. Somebody from the office will be glad to pick them up at the door from you. As always, our Lord Jesus Christ blesses us and provides for us in unbelievable abundance. And we praise him for that as we get to carry out his good news of Jesus Christ to a dead and dying world. Sing to God a hymn of gladness, sing to God a hymn of praise. He who on the cross a victim for the world's salvation fled. Jesus Christ, the King of glory, now is risen from the See the ancient powers of evil in confusion and retreat. Once he died and once was buried, now he lives forevermore. Jesus Christ, the world's redeemer, whom we worship and adore. Alleluia. Now this morning, as God's redeemed children, as we have this resurrection life while we're here on this earth, we're reminded who we are and how we got there in our very baptisms. In these words of invocation this morning, as we hear of our triune God, we celebrate this resurrection life. And so let's make that beginning in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Christ has risen from the dead. Alleluia. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. Alleluia. Alleluia. As we stand in the presence of God, we come before him with fear as is of an awe of his great mercy. In that mind this morning, let us confess our sin to God, our merciful Father, Almighty oh God, God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Creator and Preserver, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We are stained by sin from our very beginnings. We have sinned again and again, thought, word, and deed. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves and have turned away from one another in our thinking, speaking, and doing. We have done the evil you forbid and have not done the good you demand. We do repent and are truly sorry for all our many sins. Have mercy on us, gracious Father. Forgive us for all that is past and by the power of the Holy Spirit, direct our lives so that we serve you in the true faithfulness. Grant us victory over all that oppresses us and build your kingdom among us here and through Jesus Christ, our Lord. My dear children of God, in his boundless mercy, God has promised forgiveness of sins to those who repent and turn to him for restoration and renewal. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his grace, I forgive you of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God keep you in his grace by the Holy Spirit and grant you a life on earth in which you tell of the greatness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world Grant to your faithful people rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. My dear children of God, our gospel lesson comes today from the Gospel of Luke. Now, as you open your Bibles, you look for the 24th chapter. You see, we begin with that 13th verse and it reads as follows. And behold, two of them were going that very day to a village named Emmaus, which is about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all the th these things which had taken place. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself approached and began traveling with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are these words that you are exchanging with one another as you are walking? And they stood still, looking sad. One of them, Cleopas, answered and said to him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem and unaware of the things which have happened here in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, The things about Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word in the sight of God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to the sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, it is the third day since these things happened. But also some women among us amazed us. When they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just exactly as the women also had said. But him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish men, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. 
And they approached the village where they were going, and he acted though he were going farther. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us, for it is getting toward evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he had reclined at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it. And breaking it, he began giving it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. And they got up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found gathered together the eleven and those who were with him, saying, The Lord has really risen and has appeared to Simon. They began to relate their experiences on the road and how he was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. In the name of Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. I don't know about you guys. But where I was raised, there's an old hymn that really came to be very popular in the 70s. It goes something like this. Doom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark, express, depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Doom, despair, and agony on me. That's not in your hymnals? You sure? Check the new hymnal. You never know what might got in there. How about the old, old, old hymnal or the new old hymnal? No? Well, maybe it was a hymn of the world. Doom, despair, depression, agony, misery. That's a hymn of the world, isn't it? A, a hymn of, of misery because of the frail life that we have here on this earth. The frailty of mankind's feelings that drives us to glory are absolutely nuts sometimes. And by the way, it's never our fault. You imagine the disciples on the road to Emmaus, that hymn, that disparaging hymn was in the back of their minds. Doom, despair, agony, depression, misery of what they had witnessed and what they were putting their hope in as they saw who, quote, the Messiah was. The prophet, as they were mentioning it in our gospel lesson this morning. You can imagine Cleopas as he was walking along, his head was hanging down in despair and dispurging, and they were talking to each other as they watched every foot of those seven miles that they were walking, talking about everything that they were disappointed in, what they had put their hope in, what they were absolutely didn't have an answer for because it had not met their hope, their cares. All of a sudden, in our story as Luke reveals it by the power of the Holy Spirit, of all things, the one that they were disparaging about was Jesus, the resurrected Lord. I always wondered as, as he all of a sudden shows up, and it wasn't uncommon in the Middle East to have those kind of things happen, is to have somebody all of a sudden come along and walk with you the distance that they were going. How did he hide the nail-pierced hands? Did he keep his cloak down a little bit? How about, did his sandals cover, maybe the way a sandal was, it covered the hole in his feet? And what about the scars up on his brow? Did he put his hair down a little bit? Whatever it was, the disciples, Cleopas and his buddy, were kept from seeing who Jesus was. And pretty, pretty well because of their hang, head hanging low, it probably didn't take much to keep them from seeing their Messiah. He kind of giggled. It's almost like, duh, when they answer Jesus saying, where have you been, under a rock? How can you not know all that's been going on, everything that had happened? You gotta remember the disciples and everybody around at the death of Jesus on the cross heard the earthquake. They knew the temple curtain was, was ripped open. They knew, they, they heard and they saw the rising of the dead as they walked around. They heard it was finished. And they saw their Jesus who was butchered, who was dead, taken from the cross, laid in the tomb, 
and in did their type of embalming. That's what they had witnessed. They witnessed the gore. You know, the Romans were, uh, when they used crucifixion, it wasn't just mainly to carry out death. It was to, to humiliate. It was a warning, because most generally the bodies were left up and let the birds clean them up. Uh, they were stripped naked. There was nothing for them to see that was of glory. And they were let down. And Jesus wakes them up from their blindness, of their despairing, of their depression. And he, did you notice where Jesus went? He went to the precious word of God that pointed to him. And starting with Moses, the scripture tells us, as God brought this message of hope to his children from generation to generation. And when Jesus was here on those 33 years and those three years of his ministry, pointed to himself as that very prophet, that Messiah who would save them from sin, death, and power of the devil. But they were still, these disciples, all of them, were still clinging on what their hope the Messiah would be instead of who he was. That's kind of us sometimes. We're blinded in the disparage of the world. Kids, remember what I told you this morning? Get something to make a blindfold. Here's what I'd like you to do. Sorry, parents, but have some fun with it. Here's what I'd like you to do is I want you kids to take your blindfold, tie it so mom and dad can't see, and then I want you to take mom and dad's hand, and then I want you to carefully walk them around the house and explain to them what might be in their way, how they can go through, what part of the house they may be. Then what I want you to do as you talk to them about how they're going to get and where they're going to be, I want you to tell them about the story of Jesus. I want you to tell them how Jesus died on the cross for them so that we could have life. And how Jesus rose from the dead knowing that anything that we've ever done wrong and how we think and what we say, Jesus paid for that through his death on a cross. And when he rose on that Easter morning, he assures us that we will rise someday from death too. Now parents, have fun with this. Get out of your comfort zone because so often in this world, it's tough on us, in our minds, how we do this, of being used as an instrument to guide people through the word of God, to guide people to the cross, to tell them of the good news of Jesus Christ to a world that is blinded in the depression and the agony and the disparaging things that are out there. Rejoice that it is God's word that takes the blinder off of us. In your frailty that you're here on this earth today, are you blinded by the earth and everything that's wrong? What have you been hoping on? Has it been taken away through all this garbage we're dealing with today? Have your hope of your life on this earth is it falling short of what you think? And have you put your hope in Jesus by your feelings? My dear children of God, this is the time that you get to come to the cross of Jesus Christ. And look to that cross which is empty. A cross that your frailty and your shortcomings and your failures and your dispurging thought processes were nailed to a cross for you so that you would have a trust, a hope, and a comfort in your forgiveness, faith, and life eternal. You see, the cross is empty. The body of Jesus Christ did not hang there. It was laid in a tomb. And he was raised from the dead because that one time perfect sacrifice was done for you. That word of God, my dear children, today continues to reveal that to you time and time and time again. 
That word of God that tells you, even when all this world is falling apart around us, it tells you of the unconditional love of Jesus Christ. Regardless of how dark or how dank or how disparaging or what type of things that you've dealt with in the past, the blood of Jesus Christ fully and completely covers it. And our Heavenly Father sees you not in a blind, but He sees you through the blood of Christ. He sees you as perfect and without blemish. He sees you as one of His own. And because of that, We are in our resurrected life today. You're in your salvation right now. Because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have that promise, that comfort, that hope and certainty that you too will rise someday. And that you've been redeemed from sin, death, and power of the devil. As you repent of those sins, you're forgiven. Time and time and time again. And God uses some unlikely people, to take the hands of other people and open that good news of Jesus Christ. He does it in with your own children, parents, and children with your parents. He does it through some unlikely people because it's him that plants that seed and makes it grow. And my dear children of God, when you're in the midst of the struggles of this world, look to your baptism, that time that you were brought by the power of God's word as you were baptized in this death, you live victoriously in his resurrection. My fellow redeemed in Jesus Christ, I pray God the Holy Spirit preserves you in this. In the midst of all the trials and tribulations of this world, we glorify Jesus Christ, who's with us always even to the end of the age. And we look forward to what's next. Because my dear children, God's equipped us for today and he'll equip us for tomorrow and he'll equip us for the next day until the day that we see him face to face for eternity. That comes to us in one way. His name is Jesus Christ. To him we give this glory, this praise, and adoration. Amen. We confess our Christian faith together as we use the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We bring our prayers before our God. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the whole church that the message of salvation joyfully be told throughout all the world and the Easter victory of Jesus Christ be celebrated around the globe. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the nations of the world that the governments of all nations be a source of blessing to those who are governed and that oppression in all forms be hindered. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for ourselves in this season of the Lord's great victory that we be truly, truly be Easter people all year long, radiating the light of Christ in our homes, workplaces, and communities. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who serve us through their callings, especially for those who deal with special challenges or dangers on a regular basis, including police, fire, and emergency personnel. Also remember at this time the military forces of our nation, those stations both at home and abroad, whose efforts serve to defend our nation in challenging times. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those with special concerns and needs this day, those who are hospitalized, those who grieve, the unemployed and underemployed, the chronically ill and shut in, and all others whose deeds are not known to us at this time. Bless them with your presence, gracious Father, that they have a sense of victory in their lives and find strength and hope for each day, Lord, in your mercy. This morning and throughout this week, we hold up before you in prayer our Chip family.
Merciful God, we bless you for having placed into our lives faithful Christian people to guide us. On this day, we remember those no longer among us on earth who have completed their earthly races and have won the final victory in Christ. Lead us to follow in their way that we rejoice together eternally at your table and in your mansions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we end this morning, we we end with God's gracious blessing that he has given to us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. As we leave this place of worship here today, help us share the love of Christ, the truth, the way. Give us strength to live our lives for you, to serve with gladness in all that we do. By your Spirit, help us grow into Christ the more that we know. Let our lives give all glory to your Son. Give us joy, grant us peace, make us one.